I really, um, this week I felt, uh, I was down at the, at the creek in our backyard with Annalisa, and I really felt, as we're talking that this week, um, a tribute to our father, all that was there. But I uh, really felt that just resonated in my spirit. Ending with prayer. Yeah. Father, um, Lord, the intimacy that we all carry within us, Lord, may uh, today that we honor you and honor your name, honor who you are. Lord, may we love you in the way that you love us. May we give something back of what we've received from you. May we connect with you uh, into a place where um, uh, it's, uh, it's a love affair, Lord. It's a love affair with you. And I pray, Lord, that um, people would come into an encounter with you. And Holy Spirit, we need you now. Um, this is a time to get to know you. This is a time to know you. This is a time to connect with you like no other time. Oh Lord, so as I speak today and as those that are hearing, may the words be anointed uh, with, your, uh, with your Holy Spirit. And uh, may we truly bless you. So, um, I, it is today about, it is about intimacy and prayer, but I also wanted to speak about the Father, so who knows where it goes, but, but it does, see where the Spirit moves. But I also wanted, I did pray, and I also received a prophetic word today, so I wanted to read that out, and uh, this is what the Lord said. It's a moment in history to see I'm moving in a new way. The hearts that speak and know me have an opportunity to love in a new way. My heart speaks in intimacy only I can see. The depth of my love will penetrate your heart, your mind, your soul. It starts seeing it starts by seeing love in the way it's meant to be seen. It's me. Holy me. I am everything that you need. I am the one who loves you more than you can imagine. Surely I've never left you. I am part of you. I want to adore you, the holy presence in your life. See that you are beyond measure. You were made from all that I have. True love is coming. It will purify. Remember, this is a time to move in a new way. I'm setting you on a course of loving in a new way beyond what you've ever known. Let go of what you've had. And let me give you a heart to the fullest heart sacred moment when love is seen. Let's be with that and let's just pray. Lord. So, um, there were questions that we, um, two weeks ago that I, I uh, posed is do we really know what we carry? And, um, and that's been last week, uh, the first week and this week, uh, and last week, we were all part of that journey. And do we really know uh, who you are? And who is our God? Who is he? And uh, how does it work? Do we, do we live from the outside in? Or do we, li do we live from the inside out? And what about prayer? How does that fit in? Well, the thing is, prayer and intimacy are never separated. Uh, it's not like I go before um, uh, and just have a shop shopping list of desires. It's in, in my my connection, my uh, my love affair of my heart to His heart. That I have a Father that I want to pour out and acknowledge that He is my Father, and in acknowledging 
having that connection of intimacy, uh, a father to uh, a father here to speak to the children of the church. Thank you. God give that praise. It's Father's Day. Well, I really wanted to acknowledge a father. The name Father is so much more than we have in our in our earthly realm. You know, Jesus uh, spoke the words when they were uh, they were in spirit and in truth. So uh, there's a holiness, there's an awesomeness to the name Father that we just cannot imagine, and. Uh, and so to acknowledge that, but then there's that intimacy and love that he brings as well. And to honor the name Father is so much more than that. There is spirit in it. There is truth in the name Father. And as we enter in and from our hearts connect in that love to the Father, there is something that rises up within us. There is an awesome, awesome intimacy in the name Father, Abba, Daddy, the connection that he brings that nothing else can bring. And the journey to intimacy is the journey to sin. Why is that? Well, it hurts, you know. And we can enter into a love affair with our Holy Father. Uh, and just uh, let him see the love that's already there. It, love is who he is. He is spirit. He is love. He is light. And all that he is is within us. He takes the journey within us to sit with him in a quiet space of connection. In Galatians 4, and so that we would know that we are his true children, God released the Spirit of sonship into our hearts, moving uh, us to cry intimately, My Father, my true Father. That's what in it, within us right now, God is crying within you. And he may be in our heads and maybe in our uh, elsewhere from, from the outside, but from the inside. When we start to live in the depths of our spirit, that's what's crying out. There is a love and a connection in our spirit that we are his true sons and daughters. He is our true father. You know, it, it often kind of gets confusing when we talk about Holy Spirit, Jesus, and Father. And who is he? Well, he's, he's all of the above. But we don't perceive the completeness of who God is until we receive him also as Father. And, you know, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Nobody comes to the Father through me. We receive Jesus, but Jesus is all about the Father. He would spend time with his Father and when he went to be glorified in heaven, came back with his Holy Spirit, we received the spirit of, of sonship that cries out within us, Father, you are my true Father. And because we are his, like true children, we receive all the gifts and inheritance that there is. Everything that's in heaven, everything that was Jesus, we receive. But we are truly known by him, and we truly know him. And it says, why would we turn back to religion, the emptiness that in man's effort, tries to 
can connect with God when we already have received Jesus within us. God that's initiated it, not man initiating anything at all. We are his children. He gave us the keys back, connected with a place of promise, of love, through connection with him. It's all grace. All grace as gifts of his longing to be connected with us. In Romans 8, The Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us as he whispers in our innermost being, you are God's beloved child. So now I live in confidence that there is nothing in the universe with the power to separate us from God's love. There is nothing in the past, present, or future circumstances that can weaken his love. Love is the most powerful thing there is in the universe because he is love. There is nothing that triumphs above it. But in that, uh, in that awesomeness and holiness of who he is, he can be so personal with each one of you that you know that there's nobody else on earth more that he loves except you. It's an amazing thing. Is everybody feels that way. So, I, as I speak today, I would like everybody to just come into a place of acknowledging the intimacy, the personal connection that we have with him. There is no power above us or beneath us, no power that could have been found in the universe that can distance from God's passionate love which he lavished upon us through of Jesus Christ the anointed one and since we are his true children qualified to share in all his treasures for indeed we are heirs of God himself since we are joined to Christ we also inherit all that he is and all that he has. For against it, will the universe itself have had to endure the empty futility resulting from the consequence of human sin. But now, with eager expectation, all creation longs for the freedom from its slavery to decay and experience with us the wonderful freedom that comes from God's children. So our place uh, as children of God is also to bring his kingdom to earth. It says in the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. So our place is as children, as the earth is groaning to be, and to all creation is groaning to be uh, the children of God raised, we have a place as believers now to bring his kingdom to earth. We can... Uh, we can hear and we can listen to who, what God's will is to bring that about here so that uh, we, can, uh, we can bring that kingdom to earth here now. Our prayer is all about intimacy. Jesus modeled something in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 when he talks about the Lord's Prayer. And one of the things he showed was that in the Lord's Prayer, he says, In this manner, therefore, pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Before we ever even enter into asking anything from the Lord, he's first of all asking to enter into intimacy, the holiness and intimacy of the name that there is spirit and truth in the name Father that Jesus spoke. That well, our intimacy comes first before we ask for our daily bread. Our intimacy comes first before we ask 
I ate barely bread. But before we even ask for anything, we enter into intimacy, our relationship with our Father, know the holy connection we have, His Spirit within us, that connection we have. A place where we go into that place of quietness, release all distractions from the mind, and move into our heart, to our spirits, know that we have the love of prayer going on in us, speaking within us. You know, Jesus spoke a revolution a revolution going on when he spoke the word Father. Nobody ever had heard of that before. Moses had been, um, uh, uh, God spoke to Moses, said, I, I am the I am, or in the Old Testament was Jehovah or Yahweh. But when Jesus was on earth, he spoke a word that was revolutionary, Father. And, uh, and that's what we've received the glorified spirit of Jesus as we receive the Holy Spirit, we receive that intimacy of Father. There's that place within us that cries out, Abba, Abba, Father, Papa. So when we read the Lord's Prayer, it says in in this for therefore men to pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed by it be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus gave us this model of prayer. And we see uh, holiness in the name of the Father. We see that he wants us to bring, we have the capacity to bring heaven down to earth to us, that we release it throughout the world. In the place where all creation is groaning, sons and daughters are to rise up. We as sons and daughters have an opportunity to bring the kingdom here to earth. And his will be done as it is in heaven. You know, imagine yourself if you were in heaven right now. The will of the Father is done all the time. And in the same way that is done in heaven, we get the, the opportunity to bring that here on earth through our prayer. So we see that there's intimacy, but it's also about bringing us as sons and daughters, releasing the kingdom here to earth. And now after everything is about his, your kingdom, Father's will be done on earth as in heaven. It's about relationship with the Father, the holiness of his name that we enter in. It's our love affair with our Father that everything else comes from. And we see in Matthew 6.12 it says, forgive us our debts, as we forget our, as we give us our de debtors. So the father, father doesn't want anything at all to get in the way of relationship with him. And that's why he's calling us to forgive. Because for forgiveness separates us from him. Because if I, if I forgive somebody, I step up into a higher place. Because he is not unforgiveness, he is forgiveness. I step into the realm of him. But if I step down into unforgiveness, 
I am stepping down into the earthly realm where the enemy lays. I live in my judgments. I live in my unforgiveness. And that separates from him, me from him. So we step into that higher realm where we forgive and release the debt, release our judgments so we step into the place of intimacy and relationship with him. Step into grace. Finally, he says, do not, lead, um, lead, do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I, I just, um, as you sort of meditate on that line, there is something that is holy and glorious about it. There's, there's a divineness, there's, uh, there's an awesomeness. I, it's almost like this fear of the Lord rises up in you when you actually read that line and start to really understand what it means. So we, we have the opportunity to introduce this to our prayer, to have a, a chance to, to uh, be able to understand in a deeper way what that means. It's a, it's a model for all prayer, that intimacy starts first. Building on last week, we had some time where we went into silent prayer. I'd like to build that on that time today. So we will, we're going, I'd like you to be able to, and again, nobody's forcing you to do this. If you feel led to do that, I'd just like you to help enter in and participate. But um, in that quietness, enter in, task the mind, fill the mind, a- and to enter in. All that you have to do is to come. Come before him because you love him. You want to honor him. You want to honor him as your father. And that's all it is. Nothing about self. So anything that any time you feel like is, I want to get something for me. No, it's just about pouring our heart of our love to our father who is already within us. So we're going to come to a place where in this, in this time is to enter into the Lord's prayer and just to sort of meditate on the word, our Father. Father, what's been, what's rising up in you as you pour out and worship him as your Father? And then as you move on, if you feel led to move on, you can wor- uh, move on to the line, hallowed be thy name. And to and then after that, if, if, you go, or if the Lord allows you to go on, I want you to go on further, to, um, to go into that word, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And now is the time to know him for all that he would want us to know, spiritually speaking in us. So I'll ask you to quiet, come to him in love, come to him with, Nothing but a heart. And if there's distraction, go with the thought. Don't try to wrestle with it. Come back to the word. Love. And we're going to just give you some time to do that. Father, that we can see you today. Lord, we thank you that uh, we can honor you today on Father's Day. Lord, we just come before you as our Father, as our Papa. We love you in the way that you always wanted us to be loved, in a new way. I would encourage you to do some more time in that prayer. Go longer. And really express our love within us, Lord, live from the inside, that love expressed through our, in our intimacy with him, is expressed in that, in that prayer. We can also pray from that place of prayer.
one of them came from here to the west. And uh, so take the time. Um, we are I encourage you to do that. One of my favorite authors um, is uh, Brenna Manning. I don't know if it's Brenna Manning or Brenna Manning. But one of my favorite books is Mother's Child. A book that uh, will definitely change your life. Uh, I speak of him because the next song uh, is just about Brennan Manning. And um, I want us to go into a time of worship right now. And these songs, when that connection you have with them says, enter into true worship with him as your father. So let us minister to that song. And I want to bless our Father. Um, I just thank you, Father, uh, for who you are, Lord, that uh, that you passionately love us. There's no words to describe that love. And uh, Lord, I pray that each one of us can really enter in to the place of knowing you more and the depth of your spirit that resides within us. And that we can pour out our love to you in the same way that you're pouring out your love to us. And your love to us is enough to just really get in touch with that. Thank you. We honor you today. Let's just sing Father's 